So I'm going to put in my NutriSense Continuous Glucose Monitor. So here's the box that it comes in. I have a lot of clients who, once they decide to get their first NutriSense, they ask me questions about these because for whatever reason, the first time you do one of these, it seems intimidating or hard or scary. So I'm here to break it down. It's very straightforward. So each box comes with two different sensors. Okay. So they all, the company figures out for you a prescription. You can't get these without a doctor's prescription as of the standard of care right now, unfortunately. So the nice thing about NutriSense is they figure all that out for you. So you don't have to go see a doctor to get these. You just pay NutriSense directly. And here's one box, I already opened it. So I'm gonna show you how you put this in. So what comes in the box are the instructions, which I don't need, because I'm gonna give you the instructions. A couple of alcohol swabs, and then this, these two pieces are how you put together your device, and it's gonna go in my arm. All it is is a subcutaneous needle, and that subcutaneous needle goes into the interstitial fluid, which is another separate kind of fluid in your body, separate from your blood. So your interstitial fluid shows blood sugar in it, a little delayed from where your actual sugar is in your blood, but that's how these things work. They're very accurate. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you wanna make sure that your body's clean and that you showered this morning. Thank goodness I did. And so then you're just gonna wipe. I always say, if you put your arm out, and granted, I'm muscular, but everyone has fat here. So you wanna go for the fattiest part of your tricep. So I typically will look in the mirror and try to find where that spot is. If you do it too close down to your elbow or too far up to your armpit, it's gonna be uncomfortable when you put it in and you have the risk that you're in your tricep muscle then. So I just wanna go in that fattiest part. So after I clean it off, I just wanna open these two pieces. So this part and this part line up. So this long cut, which is the only long cut that's all around this whole thing, that's gonna go in this bottom part. So once you have them together, you're just gonna hit it down. And then as you can see, it pulls that needle in. So now this you just throw away, that's garbage. But this is what we're gonna put in that fattiest part of our, part of our tricep. So here, is about where I'd say it would go on me. Sometimes I use this arm, sometimes I use this arm. What you can see right here, do you see that's a little bit of a scar that I have from the last one? Because I had two different sensors back to back and I'll sometimes leave a mark. So I just try to use a different arm if I've had a mark there. So now all I'm gonna do with this needle and no, it does not hurt, is I'm gonna put it right there and then I just popped it into my arm. So now I have a subcutaneous needle going into my arm, this is connected to my phone. So now what I have to do is go grab my phone. So I'm gonna go get that and I'm gonna scan the sensor. So in my apps, I have this NutriSense app right here. So you wanna be connected to Wi-Fi. So do you see this? Your current sensor expired. This was one of my old sensors. So now I'm gonna go into settings, sensor, activate new sensor. So now all you have to do, there. So now I just, you can begin scanning your sensor in an hour, make sure to scan it every eight hours. So now we just activated it. And so it tells me it's gonna expire in 14 days that I activated it on December 27th, 2022. And then you sometimes can use a manual calibration. And without getting into all the nerdy science about that, sometimes if you do your blood glucose, if you test it with a finger prick, those devices are called a glucometer, that could be off from this. This could be a little higher or a little lower. And so if that's true, you might wanna go into your manual sensor and figure out where it is relative to baseline. But for me, it's usually always spot on. So I'm just gonna leave that there and then I'll wait until I can get the um, an hour from now and then I will just scan it and then I can do my first scan. So if I scanned it right now, it's gonna tell me you gotta wait. Your sensor is not ready yet. Please try again in 30 minutes. So then I'm just gonna wait and it tells me, this is just some data that was from the 12th. So this is how low my blood glucose has been on carnivore. The highest that I really see it get after meals is kind of in the high 90s. I don't really see it ever over 100. And then if I'm fasting or if I haven't eaten for a long time, it might get as low as the 60s, but it's typically in the 70s or 80s, which are great glucose numbers. You really wanna be between the range of 70 on the low end and 90 on the high end for any time you're not eating and then a postprandial blood glucose score, postprandial meaning after you've eaten, could bump up to like in the 90s or a little over 100 and then you want it to come right back down.
So carnivore has been excellent for testing my blood sugar, and it shows and proves to me over and over and over again that the thing that we want to avoid is any kind of insulin spike. What this is doing is it's testing how much sugar I have in my blood, and when you have a lot of sugar in your blood, then your pancreas, which is this organ on your left-hand side, that starts to release insulin, and insulin is a hormone that tells your body to store fat. So when you eat a lot of carbohydrate, if you have a big bowl of pasta, if you have a bunch of rice, if you have something that's a big sweet treat, anything like that that you consume tells your, pan your pancreas then releases insulin and that insulin is cleaning the sugar out of your blood and then it's storing that sugar in your body. It first stores it in your liver, which is this organ on the right hand side, then it stores it in your skeletal muscle which is the second organ that gets stored in. And then after your liver and your skeletal muscle are full, then all of the sugar that you consume gets stored in your fat cells. So a great way to lose weight is to reduce the amount of carbohydrates you consume because you're gonna minimize any sort of insulin spike. I hope that's helpful.